Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Uh, today, we're going to discuss how we can combine agronomy and technology to better manage our corn crops. Um, at the recent Ontario Agricultural Conference, uh, agris agronomist uh, Dale Cowan described how he's using aerial imagery to determine final stand counts in corn and what they can tell us. Um, Dale joins me now to talk about more uh, of uh, how he's using up-in-the-air technology to assess plant populations and field performance. Hi, Dale. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Oh, hey, Bernard. Nice to be here. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, I want to discuss drones and aerial services in a minute, but first let's talk agronomy. Um, last summer, you did some research on corn tassel counts and, and harvest populations. Tell us what you did and why you feel it's important to know our harvest populations. Well, I think, uh, you know, with any precision egg uh, technology, you always uh, do a plan first, or hopefully you do, and then you, you implement the plan, and then you follow through. And I, I think uh, one of the areas I feel personally that we're missing in is when you do a lot of variable rate seeding or just straight rate seeding is how many of us actually do a final uh, population just prior to harvest? What are we actually harvesting compared to what we actually planted? And, and that number is not the same number. And quite often, it's quite variable through the field, and it's quite hard sometimes walking through a field to actually see that. So we decided to use some uh, some drone technology and, and see if we can't get a more detailed count of uh, just the distribution of population, never mind variable rate seeding, just, just what is the distribution in a normal uh, fixed rate seeding uh, application. Now, we have some images here, and I'm going to put them up on the screen, uh, detailing you know, harvest populations in a field that you followed, um, they're really, they really tell an interesting story. Um, what are we seeing here, this first one that really looks at counts across the field? Well, this is a result of, of a drone image. So this is a 79-acre field, and normally when you walk a field, you might do a dozen population counts, maybe never get to the back of the farm. So this drone was programmed to fly the entire field and basically take an image on every acre, the center of every acre. And uh, and in doing so, we were able to capture uh, at a high resolution, only 50 feet above ground level, so very detailed uh, imagery and then we subscribe to a service to interpret that image using a logarithm to uh, to count tassels so what you're looking at there is the final result of a map and those circles are where the image was taken and that number in the circle is the plant stands in thousands of an acre or the tassel counts rather in thousands of an acre so it gives you a pretty good distribution across the whole field of just what the variability was in in final population yeah and we also got a picture of close-ups of the tassels and how how that imagery works, uh, Dale, what do you see here? Well, what, what you're subscribing to, what you're purchasing uh, with a service provider, a high-end service provider, is use of their logarithm that's been uh, set up with uh, a recognition, object recognition software that says, this is what a corn tassel looks like. Here's the image. Now go find everything that looks like a corn tassel they train you to find and add them up for me. And that's really what you're looking at is a, is a logarithm looking, interpreting an image and counting the number of tassels it finds in an image and then extrapolating out to plants per acre. Yeah, another interesting picture here, a population comparison, and really, really quite a telling picture here, uh, Dale, 20,000 versus 29,000, um, you know, you, stark dif differences here. Well, yeah, so I dropped 34,000 seeds per acre, so I've got uh, some spots in my field as low as 20, and it's quite obvious the gaps in the bare dirt that's showing, which means it's not growing corn, and the 28 or 29,000 plants, there's, you can't see any ground and intercepting as much sunlight as possible. So right off the bat, you start to see, well, I got a major difference in my biomass, which means I should have a pretty good difference in my yield, so then the question becomes, why is that there? If I if I drop thirty four thousand, why am I missing you know fourteen thousand plants per acre? Yeah, and hey, final thing I want to look at here is you, know, you also have a yield map, and it really does line up with a population map. Uh, when you look at this from an agronomic perspective, uh, you know, what are you learning, and what questions should growers ask when they see this? Well, yield is always a function of of. Uh, you know, of crop stress, right? So the, f the fewer stresses a crop uh, comes across, the more yield it, it, it should produce. And what you see in the map is a range in yields and that 
lower left-hand corner. Uh, I know for a fact from having first-hand knowledge in the field, that's a drainage issue. And that's really where that low population image came from. So we had an environment there that we lost some plants due to some pretty heavy rainfall events and some resulting poor drainage. And then we got other areas where we have subtle changes in topography, uh, soil texture, uh, moisture holding capacity, drainage issues. And uh, so you just start to see that natural field attributes start to play on that fixed population. And now I see that I can start relating yield to population and just verify that, uh, you know, just, just what am I getting for population? And then you also start to understand the characteristics of the hybrid. So when you grow a flex hybrid that has a low population, sometimes the yield at 22 or 23,000 plants per acre isn't much different than the yield at 28 or 29,000 plants per acre because it has the ability to compensate. So you start to see hybrid characteristics starting to come to light in the field. So, What about uh, variable rate technology here, uh, Dale? Do, do we see a fit here with, with this type of field or with being able to sort of assess and determine that this is what's going on in the field? Well, this, this is where we are. This is the crossroads with the technology. I have a technology I can buy that let me do that. And then the question before that is, well, should I do that? And at what level, at what, what makes sense? Is 2,000, 4,000, 5,000 plants per acre enough of a rate change for me to actually see an impact from a variable rate seeding rate? And what are the hybrid characteristics that go with that? So it really s- starts to ask a lot of why questions. So the first one is, is, is to understand well, what have I got right now with my fixed rate? What is What are the field attributes that are causing this? And then the next question is, if drainage is my issue, putting more plants per acre there may not be the solution to that low plant population. And the yield wasn't all that, I mean, it was lower, but it wasn't a disaster there. So you really start to say that if I don't understand my field attributes and what's causing yield differences or population differences on a fixed rate, then how do I interpret a variable rate application? Right, right. Hey, I want to switch uh, switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about the technology. You know, um, you know, and these images and this information you're using here, um, you've used drones a lot. We've talked about them in past episodes for sure with you. Uh, but there's also precision ag services that, you know, can do this work for growers. In your mind, you know, what's the best way for farmers to, to tap into this information? Well, if, you, if you're genuinely interested in this kind of technology, this higher end resolution, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with a, having a drone and just taking pictures from above and just looking at your field from a different angle several times during the season, you'll learn a lot. You always learn something. So then the next step is, well, if I've got the drone and I have the scanners on board that can capture the imagery, what other service? So if you're interested in the tassel service, obviously that's proprietary. You have to purchase that. So you, you subscribe to a cloud-based service. This company happened to be Centera. And uh, you subscribe to it, and then you pay so much uh, an acre to have that logarithm run on that. And then the end result is what we just discussed. So I would have to have a really keen interest in understanding my uh, variable stand population in a natural stand setting. And then I have to start formulating what what is causing my if I know that drainage and compaction are my biggest issues, I may want to solve those first before I delve into uh, variable rate application because I may not know what's really causing my plant stand variability if I don't fully understand my field attributes uh, going forward. So that would be the first step. So you can subscribe to the service. Uh, you can get that back in probably, uh, I think that was 48 to 72 hours to turn that process. It's done when the tassels are out. So I think that was uh, late July, August. I can't remember exactly when we took that image. But you got lots of time to get the image back, look at it. And the nice part about the image is when you get that first map with the circles on it, when you're in the cloud uh, service, you can click on each one of those circles and it actually opens up that actual image underneath it. So you get to see under each one of those dots, if you will, you get to see what the actual plant stand looks like. So you get some pretty good insights and you can see things like nitrogen deficiency. And so there's lots of things, lots of layers that come in to explain this variable plant stand. And a lot of it sometimes is just the hybrid characteristics. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Dale, um, some tremendous insights. Always great to have you on the Corn School. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for asking.